An interesting situation has developed in the direction of Lyman. Here, Russians have channeled all their supplies to the north to facilitate an advance on Nevska. However, Ukrainians acted fast and now threatened to undermine the Russian breakthrough up north through an uppercut maneuver, putting the entire Russian offensive effort in jeopardy. For over one and a half years, Russians have tried to eliminate the Ukrainian bridgehead on the eastern bank of the Jerebits River, but with little progress and heavy losses to show for it. Now Russians are trying a new approach, taking control of the Ukrainian settlements along the river, and most importantly, their bridges. Taking control of the bridges would undermine Ukrainian logistics and slowly force Ukrainians to withdraw from their bridgehead. Recently, Russians have intensified their efforts up north in an attempt to break through and capture the Ukrainian town of Nevsky, which contains a bridge across the Jerebits River. A Ukrainian soldier operating in the Lyman direction also stated that Russians were supporting their effort with TOS-1, a thermobaric rocket artillery strikes, a powerful weapon system of which Russians only have approximately 30 units left. If we look at the topographic map, we can see that Russians have control of the high ground, while Ukrainian positions are stuck in the lowlands. Ukrainians further south are in a similar situation with the settlements being in the lowlands. However, a strong Ukrainian presence in the Serebriansky forest has allowed Ukrainians to dismantle most Russian attacks before they could ever reach Ukrainian lines. At Nevsky, Ukrainians don't have such an advantage, meaning that under the pressure of devastating thermobaric artillery strikes and Russians launching a mechanized assault with reportedly over 30 armored vehicles, Ukrainians were gradually forced to pull back. Interestingly enough, despite their near overwhelming advantage, Russians were unable to fully secure the settlement even after Ukrainians pulled back. Nevsky continues to be in the lowlands, meaning that now it is Ukrainian turn to utilize the high ground on the western bank of the river. As a Russian military blogger reported, Ukrainians conducted counterattacks halting the Russian advance. The Russians released a brief video showing a Russian flag flying above a destroyed house in the settlement. However, this footage provides little meaningful information as it is typical for Russians to prominently display their flag over any area they capture, whether it be a village or a simple tree line. Kremina functions as the main supply base for all Russian forces in this direction from Nevsky to the Serebriansky forest. This means that all Russian frontline positions in this area are fully reliant on supplies originating from the city. The intensified Russian effort at Nevska has inevitably led to a weaker flow of supplies to Russian positions in the fields and in the forest. This has put certain Russian positions that were already vulnerable to Ukrainian counterattacks in a precarious position. And as Russians advanced into Nevska, Ukrainians were able to retake several positions in the tree lines in front of Torska. One Russian vehicle supposedly managed to break through Ukrainian lines but was left surrounded, cut off from reinforcements, and destroyed as well. Overall, Ukrainians acted quickly and successfully fought off the Russian counterattack in front of Torska. This will allow Ukrainians to continue to pressure and threaten Russian supply lines toward the Russian effort at Nevska. Admittedly, we have seen this before. Russians launch costly assaults to take Ukrainian positions in the lowlands, overextend their supply lines, and get slowly worn down by Ukrainians on the opposing high ground. 
In the coming days and weeks, we will likely see Russians taking a high number of losses to Ukrainian drone strikes setting the stage for the counterattacks on the devastated Russian units. Drone footage released by the 79th Ukrainian Air Assault Brigade shows a large Russian convoy consisting of 20 vehicles trying to advance toward Ukrainian positions. The convoy, consisting of 14 armored vehicles and 6 tanks, planned to launch an attack, but the Ukrainian army was ready. In this attack, Ukrainian troops used various weapon systems, including artillery, drones, and anti-tank missile systems. They also used mine barriers to slow down the enemy's advance. As a result, Ukrainian troops managed to burn two enemy tanks and destroy two armored personnel carriers. Several other tanks were disabled, forcing the rest of the convoy to flee. Another video also shows how Ukrainian FPV drones ambush and destroy three Russian tanks in the Donetsk region. Drone footage from the Ukrainian 59th Motorized Brigade shows three Russian tanks trying to enter Ukrainian positions in the region. However, without realizing it, the Russian tank entered the range of the Ukrainian drone operator. And here we can see how professional and accurate the drone operator is. Drone footage from the Ukrainian 115th Separate Mechanized Brigade shows Ukrainian BMP armored vehicles speeding toward the Russian trench system. The BMPs stopped very close to the Russian trenches and started attacking Ukrainian infantry. After a brief exchange of fire, the Ukrainian troops managed to overwhelm the Russian positions and organize their small resistance. That's when Ukrainian artillery supports the Ukrainian troops and starts firing heavily towards the other extreme part of the Russian trenches, and this forces the Russian troops to stop resisting and surrender to the Ukrainian troops. 